Diana Filimonova. I'm a sales marketing manager in Baylor. And when it comes to my role, I would say it's two main areas. So uh, I'm creating and optimizing the marketing channels like uh, SEO, the paid advertising, the partnership. And when the right marketing strategy is already in place, I'm nurturing those sales leads that we receive from those channels. So by understanding the requirements, uh, proposing the right solution, and finally bringing our customers on board. Nice. Thanks, Anna. Matt, do you mind introducing yourself and your role? Okay. You know a lot of people already know you. Oh, I'll talk about it, yeah. So uh, basically, I'm uh, Matthew. Hi, hi, everyone. So I'm the uh, partner lead for AWS here in uh, Malaysia. But uh, you know what? If uh, I were to choose the job title for my role, I wouldn't have chose this uh, job title. Because it's not so interesting or as interesting as right now, of course. Yeah. So I would have chose uh, this uh, title called uh, Chief Matchmaking Officer. <laughs> Because this, this is what uh, exactly I do, right? Yeah, basically I look at the uh, market, I look at the demand and the uh, supply, and uh, from the demand from our customers, uh, we go around to look for who are the best supplier, and on top of it, uh, we are also looking into increasing the uh, option, and basically working with uh, more partners, giving the right value to the uh, uh, end customer itself. So that's uh, in general. Uh, what we do in the uh, team and uh, it, uh, the, the partner team is uh, basically uh, also increasingly uh, expanding. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I will say that uh, uh, this team is the uh, number two best ever job to be in. Number two. Which Why, is number, why one? number two? Number one, because uh, the best job is uh, Zian's uh, job. <laughs> So all of your job over here, so it's uh, pretty exciting that you're able to build something and able to uh, scale, whether you eat the fish or don't eat the fish, but you're able to be the, uh, you know, the, the change uh, for the entire country for the next five to ten years. Thank you. Thank you for our chief matchmaking officer. So now we have to, we have to understand how we make, it, make ourselves attractive to the matchmaker, right? So in order to be matchmaked into a deal that we have been. Match, match two is very quiet and it's like behind the scene. So uh, the action is uh, done when uh, the, there's a transaction between the you know the buyer and the seller. So it's like if you learn economics, is uh, uh, is managing the uh, supply and demand curve. Yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, we we are more than happy to you know co-market with you and co-sell with uh, all of you. Nice, Matt. I'll remember that. I'll come back to you shortly. <laughs> And now, um, Wafer is actually the first and only ISV SRA partner uh, in Malaysia. Uh, do you mind sharing with us a bit about your journey or Wafer journey into ISV SRA status? Um, first of all, I want to thank AWS team for all the support. And I'm going to do it a lot during my presentation today, to be honest. So uh, thank you to Zian, Wonshi, and the rest of the team, because without you, it would just not be possible. Um, so when it comes to our journey, I would say that it has been very exciting and sometimes it has been challenging as well, but that's what makes it amazing in nature, isn't it? So um, our journey started more than 10 years ago when we started collaborating with AWS. And I would say we have won hearts of so many customers across the nation and beyond. Um, I would say when it comes to the success factors for our journey, there are two main factors which are creating the brand awareness and also the lead generation. And AWS supported us on the both fronts. So probably here I can talk a bit more about the marketing development fund, which uh, Diane mentioned earlier as well. So um, last year has been our first experience with the MDF. And within the two months of the company, we managed to generate over 40 sales leads across five different markets. And that has been a very big success for our business, which primarily established in Malaysia. So we started going more for the international market itself. Um, and I would say this is just the beginning because for 2022, we have very huge plans as well, which are coming soon. And another side is um, AWS team help us with the uh, foundational technical review, which is the FTR. So with the help of the AWS team, our technical team passed the FTR photo of our core products, which is the ERP and the, our data lake platform. So the good part is that when we bring this up during our uh, discussion with our customers, this gives extra confidence in our solutions. And speaking of the sales part, um, 
there have been many cases when we were inviting the AWS team to our presentations as customers. So we were doing a lot of co-presentations together and I would say it has been very successful. Nice, very nice. Looks like uh, Dyna and Riffler have been able to leverage the program and generate some early results as well. Definitely. Very nice. Matt, back to you. Knowing that there are various segments in the AWS. So from segment perspective, right now from AWS outside view, right, like your matchmaking role, what are some of the criteria you look at in selecting the solution to go to market with? Yeah. So it's, it's all about customer obsession, right? Yeah, because uh, what what we do over here, and uh, of course for uh, all of your company uh, out there as well, uh, we always uh, focus on the outcome on the uh, customer side. So if we uh, go on that uh, particular picture of our thoughts, right? So as long as uh, you are customer obsessed, uh, we basically will work with you to actually address the uh, customer segment. So for AWS, uh, I mean, this is what has been mentioned by uh, Lawrence. Um, we, we sell the building box, we sell API. So if you look at the uh, house or condo itself, uh, we are the great seller. So, but uh, who are the ones who you know, create the condominium? Who are the ones who create the uh, house? Like, basically, it's all of you here. Yeah. In Diana's case, it's a uh, wavelet, right? So when the AWS account manager goes out, right? Do you think we are able to sell bricks to our end customer? The answer is absolutely not. So, but how do we um, you know, get the right uh, partner? And when I say right uh, a partner, right, uh, we need to be able to work with a partner that is able to gain trust with the market. Yeah. So how do you increase the question is how do you increase the trust of the market? How do we you know, walk in with you into uh, one customer and when the customer see you as a partner, they say, hey, look, this is the partner that I trust and I believe that I'm able to get the best value. It's either the best value or the uh, best feature that they can ever have for a particular software that they want to buy. So th that's where we can get a lot more uh, attention from the entire uh, segment, be it from uh, SMB. Of course, I have with me uh, May, who uh, takes care of the SMB uh, segment uh, sales in the uh, partnership perspective, and myself, uh, I focus very much on the uh, enterprise uh, side. So uh, I would say both customer obsession and trust is important. And maybe I want to add, add on something. So um, uh, if you look at all the programs that uh, ZM has, right, basically that will help you to enhance your trust in the market. So that ISV Accelerate, yeah, why don't bother to do ISV Accelerate, right? Uh, not because you, you, you like to see as yet every day or whatnot. <laughs> but, a nice person, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit disappointed now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, that, that helps you to gain uh, trust from your end customer. Because to the end customer, right, uh, this is the house that has been validated. Yeah, so someone have uh, gone in to uh, kind of uh, check that, you know, this is right. You know, if you are, if you get, Eating the fish, right? Basically, you are creating an endless uh, condominium. And from this endless condominium, uh, if you are a buyer, right, you'll be thinking, hey, you know, should I buy from a condominium that is validated? Should I buy from a branded uh, developer? I mean, of course, you have your brand, right? So, yeah, buy from the branded developer, but who's going to check this developer whether they're de delivering the right thing or not? So, this service validation is a kind of an quote unquote endorsement that. This condominium has been checked, it's safe to buy, and it's worth your money. Great tips from the matchmaker. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to uh, delve in deeper, man. Um, we have hundreds of thousands of partners out there, right? Uh, there are probably, uh, I, I probably didn't get the right number, but there are probably thousands listening, right, like in Malaysia. So, how do you get to know the partner solution out there? Yeah. So there's a um, uh, uh, question of uh, how do you uh, be more visible, right? Yeah. So one thing that I learned uh, throughout my uh, career, right? Yeah. I've been uh, I've been managing ISV previously, uh, but of course the best job went to you. 
Yeah, so <laughs> uh, eight years, eight to nine is uh, on uh, managing ISV. Uh, what I found is, uh, first of all, right, uh, you guys uh, it, uh, have great solution, but the problem is this is your best kept secret. So in general, right, uh, you know that you're good and uh, everyone else within your company knows that you're good. But nobody, uh, not many people out there knows that you are great, right? So it is almost important that uh, you know you get the word out there. You know you engage with eight of the ASC, engage with the broader community to get the word out there that you know you have this great solution and you know please do uh, look at us. Um, I would say in the in in a more narrow uh, uh, in a more narrow manner. Uh, we have tools, like for example, there's a partner discovery tool. So I was told by Zidian, uh, most of you just simply build in whenever you go into your partner discovery tool. So uh, maybe that's not a great idea because uh, we do look at the partner discovery tool, uh, not just the AWS account managers, but our customers also go to uh, AWS to uh, look out for uh, all the different uh, uh, you know, solutions that is uh, out there. So please do you know get get your entire solution uh, updated on your partner discovery tool. So that's one simple way. Uh, the second part is uh, please do uh, use our APM portal. So whenever you find that there's uh, an opportunity, uh, please do register your opportunity. Why why would you uh, do that? So basically at the back end, right, there's actually a lot of people working on your opportunity. First of all, we have the ACE validation team. Basically, they look at all the buying criteria of your opportunity before they push it to my account manager. And as a, a software provider, uh, we do have a role called the ISF, the ISP sales manager. Uh, this person, uh, his only measurement is if he's able to uh, sell your product. Yeah. So he doesn't get a mention if let's say there's one opportunity that has no partner attached. In this case, it's the uh, a software partner. So uh, on top of the ISM, we do have the account manager who would get this opportunity on their dashboard. And uh, internally, they are very strict on uh, our uh, CRM. So they would need to uh, follow up with you and potentially with the uh, customer uh, in a regular basis. So therefore, right now, uh, you don't just have your own seller uh, having to help you to uh, sell to this customer. Right now, you have the AWS seller to help you, you know, co-sell with the uh, customer as well. So this again will enhance your win rate, and this is what the, you know the whole partner team is uh, working on on our side to basically uh, create a success together with you. Thanks, Matt. I guess uh, very good tips here again. Uh, making yourself relevant to AWS, uh, being active uh, out there uh, with a networking session like this today, right? Uh, of course, uh, partner discovery portal, as uh, Matt said, and also make a deal visible uh, to AWS. I think that's very important. And now back to you. So, hearing some of the pointers that uh, Mitch Mankers are giving us, uh, how, how about uh, with how do you make yourself relevant to the AWS sales team? Um, I would say I should agree that um, when it comes to us, one of the key to success is the fact that we continuously engage and communicate with the AWS team. And um, AWS team understands us in a way that uh, when it comes to data, we have a very unique approach to the market. So we don't provide the uh, standard product. So our product is very custom. So every case is very different. So the important part is that AWS understands that uh, we are different from other vendors in the market and that's very important. Um, because um, AWS understands our capabilities, so when it comes to the opportunities referred by the AWS team side, it, I would say it's a perfect match. It's a perfect match between the problem statement that the customers are bringing along and the solutions that we offer in the market. So eventually it results in the happy clients that we serve throughout the years. Um, apart from that, uh, just like on a more exciting note, um, Wavelet had a chance to participate in the IC Outreach Day and the Prospecting League. So when it comes to the IC Outreach Day, we managed to share about our latest product, which is the UCC, the messaging platform for WhatsApp and Facebook. 
And when it comes to the prospecting league, um, I would say it was very exciting because uh, it was our first time to participate in 2021 and we became the winners, which was really great. Um, one of the prizes that we received was actually the virtual happy hour with the Malaysia AWS leaders. And apart from that, we also received a very nice food treat directly to the office, so we managed to share it during the virtual session. So it has been a very nice, exciting experience. Um, and also just want to add that, uh, just now Matthew mentioned about the uh, APN portal. I would say yes, it's extremely important. So in our company, I'm in charge of the opportunity submission. And uh, the thing is that it allows me to interact with uh, multiple account managers. So every time when I submit uh, opportunity, usually the account manager reach out to me and then they offer help and then they ask me more about that opportunity. So uh, I feel very uh, welcome and I know that if I need help, I can always reach out and get it. So uh, probably later I can share a bit more about uh, some examples of that. Thank you, Dana. Looks like uh, Dana and uh, Wavelet have a very uh, nice working relationship already uh, with AWS team. So uh, as they say, it looks uh, easier than what was uh, being presented. So I'm sure there's a lot of hard work that we've had put in to differentiate themselves and to be relevant to uh, AWS team as well. Matt, back to you, the matchmaker. <laughs> you mentioned a few persona earlier, for example, like the ISM. So I wanted to know uh, a bit more, in actual co-sell scenario, what really happened? Because not all of us have a chance to co-sell with AWS yet, right? So let's hear from our partner chief here today. Or the, or the chief make, matchmaker, matchmaker officer here, <laughs> or the real action uh, on the ground. Yeah, so uh, basically, if you, if you look at the uh, partner team, right, uh, it consists of the uh, two different uh, aspects of the uh, partnership. So there's one team who takes care of a building. So there's a build team and there's a sell team. So uh, what uh, we have gone through just now in the entire uh, uh, you know, Zian and uh, Kelly have also mentioned on what they do on the build side, right? So we have a highly uh, comprehensive uh, program uh, to build together with you. And that's where the uh, PDM uh, comes in. That's why I did mention, right, the number one uh, best role in the world, right, is actually that team. Uh, so that's the build team, yeah. So come to the second best uh, job in the world, right, uh, which is the uh, cell team. Uh, this is where we have the uh, ISV uh, uh, sales uh, manager. So the ISV sales manager, uh, their primary responsibility is to make sure that they are, they are able to go out to the market, introduce all the different solutions that we have from our software partners, from, from all of you, and they come up with plans on how to uh, you know, get this out to uh, all our potential uh, customers. So that's the role of uh, 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 ISM and uh, one of the big measurement is uh, not just generating opportunity, uh, but uh, the most important part is uh, the launching. Yeah. So if they, are, if they are able to generate a lot of opportunity, but there's no launches, there's no conversion to uh, the uh, customer, uh, they will not get anything. Yeah. So this is how we, uh, this is how we measure the, uh, uh, the ISV uh, sales manager. On the other hand, you also have uh, the role called the uh, partner sales manager, uh, in which uh, we look at the different uh, segments. So in Malaysia, uh, on the SME side, we have uh, May, uh, who will again, you know, help you to enhance the entire uh, value proposition to the end customer, so that you you are able to, you know, quickly uh, sell and quickly close the sale. Uh, as and as for myself, I'm on the enterprise uh, portion. Yes, no doubt that uh, the uh, the kind of sales cycle will be slightly longer on my side, uh, but uh, we do uh, look at the uh, bigger uh, type of uh, sale and the higher value type of sale. Nice, man. Looks like there's a lot of different persona that's actually co selling, uh, stating uh, different types of specialties uh, in the areas that you know, uh, they co sell with their partner. Uh, I'm not back to you, right? I'm sure that you have a lot of uh, co selling experience with AWS as well. Uh, in your own experience, so how was working with AWS like across a different persona? Um, probably out of all examples, I just want to share a bit about uh, the ones that we had last year. So the discussion took place with one of the most established hotels in Langkawi. So I'm not able to share the name, but probably many people can understand which one I'm referring to. 
so what happened is uh, during the discussion, one of the main concerns for the customer was the data security. So the reason is because in the past they had very bad experience with other service providers. So when they have become very cautious when it comes to choosing new vendor. So in this case, uh, DataZ and AWS uh, were uh, doing the co-presentation together. So when it comes to our side, we were more addressing the uh, questions when it comes to features and functionalities of our system. But we have allowed the AWS team to help us to address all those concerns related to the data security and eventually it resulted in the success. So later when I was uh, speaking to the client itself, they mentioned that uh, basically the fact that we brought the AWS team in uh, during that process actually defined uh, the decision when it comes to this deal. So I would say the experience has been very, very good. Thank you, Lana. That's nice. Um, you mentioned earlier that uh, uh, the various solution that uh, Wakefield has, uh, UCC being one, so there's actually a cross-platform uh, single communication uh, channel uh, across partner. So I do know that uh, Wakefield has data analytics uh, solution, uh, conversational commerce, uh, e-commerce membership solution. So this solution looks like a very great set that can benefit a lot of customers. So I uh, know your role as a marketing lead in Wakefield as well. So how do you scale, right? in order to reach a larger audience. Can you share a bit with us? Um, I would say when it comes to marketing plan, it's really huge. And from year to year, it's getting bigger in terms of scope. And one of the reasons is because we are getting more support from the AWS side. So as I mentioned earlier in 2022, uh, we are going to cover the scopes that we never had before. So apart from the, like I would say, standard side of TPs that we are going to have, we are moving more towards the video production, the email marketing, LinkedIn, social media, uh, for example, the workshop organizing. So previously, when it comes to our own event management, we were focusing only on one audience. But uh, thanks to the MDF, the Marketing Development Fund mentioned by Zian earlier, uh, we actually managed to uh, break down our audience into three main groups. So we are going to have the different targeted workshops so one is, for example, for our existing customers for the cross-selling opportunities. Another one is for the prospects. So those, those potential customers that are already part of our sales funnel. So we just need to like, push them a bit further when it comes to the next stage. And another one is, for example, the resellers. So we're going to train and teach our resellers to become our brand ambassadors. So when they go out in the market, they can share more about our solutions. And I uh, just want to thank you, Zian, for the opportunity to work uh, on our business plan together earlier this year. And as you mentioned, that um, like when it comes to our UCC, uh, well, for 2022, our direction has changed a bit. So initially, ERP has been our core solution. But when it comes to 2022, we are bringing our new product in the middle, and the rest of the modules are becoming more with the add-ons. So it requires some change when it comes to the planning of all the activities and uh, thank you for all the insights and expertise uh, because it has been very helpful uh, in order to build a new plan for this coming year. Um, another opportunity that we also have, uh, thanks to Maine, is the opportunity to uh, collaborate with one of the local banks. Uh, thank you very much for that because it will definitely open a new channel for us to uh, reach to the bigger audience. Um, and probably the last point would be is uh, Vailet is in the market for around 18 years. So I would say we are quite established in Malaysia. So we would like to think further and we would like to expand in other markets. So one of the ways how we would like to do it is, um, as previously we closed some of the deals together with the AWS, so those customers already have some presence in the other markets. So with the help of the local AWS representatives and as well as the marketing development fund for the targeted marketing activities, I'm sure it will be definitely possible. Very nice. Thank you, Lana, for the candid uh, sharing. I think there's a lot, a lot of tips there. Uh, I hope you guys are taking notes. So uh, there are various things that Diana mentioned. Uh, winning a customer, expand together with the customer to a new geographical region, uh, using smart marketing way to reach a larger audience, uh, work through AWS, by the way, it's an honor to be part of your journey, right? Uh, to actually expand out, right? Through the assets and the programs that AWS has as well. All right, back to Matthew. Matt, how does partner work with AWS at scale? Okay, so. Okay, so Matthew, you 
um, I would say it really depends on your uh, on what you're selling out there. Uh, we do uh, work in a lot of uh, horizontal uh, type of uh, application, and we do also have uh, a lot of the vertical based uh, uh, software solution uh, rendered. Uh, so if you look at the uh, horizontal part, uh, well, we would always uh, want to uh, plan with you on you know what type of a uh, persona that we are uh, uh, targeting in the uh, market. So say if uh, you are selling a HR uh, solution, right? Uh, basically, the target is always the uh, HR manager. So these are all the uh, business people. So you do uh, work with us. I mean, uh, this all we mentioned that we have the build team, we have the sell team, and both of these team uh, can actually work on you know getting the right audience uh, to you and you know working with you to address the uh, right uh, audience. The second part is on the uh, vertical uh, type of uh, application. So this is where uh, we can work together uh, again. Uh, perhaps there's a certain uh, uh, industry uh, user group or, uh, or a certain uh, society where we can work together to uh, address the, 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 the kind of uh, vertical that uh, we want to address. Um, one of the pop most popular things that uh, we uh, now, now is we, we do it quite often is the uh, executive uh, round table. Uh, where we invite, uh, uh, say, five to ten companies uh, at sea level uh, to come into the room and, uh, and for us, together with the uh, partners, to uh, share on the, you know, the, the vision of uh, where we see uh, they will be in in terms of uh, the adoption of uh, your, your solution or your uh, software. So, all in all, uh, I would say that uh, we need to understand from you on uh, you know, at the very right top level strategy, uh, are you going for cost leadership? Are you going to, you know, sell to uh, many uh, companies at the same time? Or you're going for a differentiator uh, strategy? Because if you're going, if you're going for the, uh, you know, cost uh, uh, leader strategy, you will need to really go into the top of the funnel. You, you have to do stuff like, uh, uh, you need to go into social media, you need to, uh, pump a lot of uh, resources into uh, marketing. Uh, whereas on the other side, if you are going on the differentiation uh, strategy, this is where things become uh, quite uh, interesting, right? This is where we can you know, really target uh, our audience and we are able to sell what I call, um, instead of looking at price, right? Uh, how do we go out together to sell an affordable luxury? So the keyword is affordable luxury. You don't sell something that people can buy, right? People look at, wow, this one is like, it's my dream, uh, it's my dream software. But uh, we go into this uh, area where uh, we create a, a layer of a commodity, which what I call the affordable luxury. If we are able to uh, come up with this, uh, you know, solid uh, price point, right? I think uh, both AWS and, uh, and you as a partner, we should be able to get out to the, get out to the market and be highly successful together. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, I guess uh, uh, a really great uh, insight and sharing, both for Diana and uh, Matthew. Uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, the rest of us uh, will be still around. Uh, Matt will be around, Diana will be around. And uh, just to also let you guys know, there's a lot of AWS people in this networking session here today, right? Ranging from our country manager, our regional leadership team, country leadership team, uh, from the SA community, Raj is here, uh, as well as segment leader. Uh, I know that Asa is here, but I can't see Asa. Oh, yeah. That's our answer, Asa here. And uh, there's a, a, a great presence of uh, account management team uh, in this forum as well. So my suggestion to you is to make full use of this networking session get to know AWS people, uh, get yourself uh, be visible uh, among the AWS community so that you could probably taste a bit of what Diana had mentioned earlier uh, on co-selling and co-marketing success with AWS. All right, thank you again. Thanks for the session. Thanks Diana, thanks for having me.